Okay, Patrick, when you're ready. Imagine a world, a place in a world where you can get drugs at snap of a finger. That's how easy it is to get drugs at uh, concerts such as rave concerts. And in this picture right here, these kids, they're like 15, 16 max. And they have pacifiers in their mouth. Now a lot of people don't know what that is. And it prevents you, when you're doing ecstasy, from grinding your teeth. And it's that easy for kids at this age to get drugs. My name is Patrick Torino, and today, I want to talk about, I want to talk to the audience about how policing and security, as well as safety concerns, needs to be increased at uh, the music concerts of the rave genre. First, let's look at one of the most underlying problems, and that's the understaffed or underqualified police. At Shows such as Electric Dance Carnival, which is a popular rave uh, concert, there is no experience needed to be a bodyguard. There was actual Craigslist ads saying, we will train you, no experience needed. Because of this, they don't have the proper training to handle crowds properly. And also, once you actually get into the concert, there is little to no undercover staff at some of these concerts to monitor the inside affairs and drug traffic. Another big concern is how easily drugs such as ecstasy and alcohol are smuggled into these concerts. And that's due to lack of security doing their job right. From an, uh, from an article from Newsday.com on a nationwide statistic, it said that 10% of teens say that they've attended raves, and out of two-thirds of those raves, easily obtainable ecstasy slash other drugs is, like I said, obtainable at snap of a finger. Richard Bryan from the Las Vegas Journal did a research after a 15-year-old girl, Sasha Rodriguez, passed away due to an overdose of the drug ecstasy saying, I'm not saying everyone is on it, but definitely a lot of them are. So it's a very common thing that goes on at these concerts. The government investigated the rave ecstasy connection after New Year's Eve of 2011, where 18 patients on New Year's Eve were admitted to the hospital um, due to ecstasy complications, and the ages range from 16 to 36. Another example is the Haunted Coliseum, where two 16-year-old girls um, overdose on ecstasy. Now what they do to get the alcohol and some of the drugs into the concert is they conceal it in a fruit bo uh, a bottle of either Gatorade or fruit punch, and some venues actually allow you to bring drinks into it which was the case at the electric Daisy Carnival. Kevin Dutch of Newsday said, pertaining to the accident that occurred at the Haunted Coliseum, Molly and Ecstasy were two drugs witnesses could identify as possibly being there, as well as alcohol being distributed, uh, being disguised in Gatorade bottles. And yet another concern, is the fake IDs and low age limit of the shows. Some shows, 16 year olds are allowed to go. Uh, at the Electric Daisy Carnival, where Sasha Rodriguez went to, she wasn't ID'd at all. She was 15 and she got it. And because of this, because policing wasn't doing their job, she eventually lost her life. Now, at this age, 15, 16, brains aren't fully developed, you're still an adolescent. And a study done by scientists such as Dr. Jay Gield from the National Institute of Mental Health showed that teenagers from ages 13 to 18 are still maturing. 
So I talked about the problems. Now, the solutions. This was a statistic given on the New Year's Eve event that I just mentioned. And this is uh, solutions for the uh, better safety, an image that I showed. Um, what they need to do at these concerts, how can we solve this problem to ensure the rate that the safety goes up at these concerts, is make sure that all the security hired are qualified professionals. Uh, at the Electric Daisy concert, like I mentioned, there was no experience needed. Have experience requirement for all policing jobs at the show. Also, you can increase staff at the event, which will lead to an increase in uh, safety. Another thing is the higher drug sniffing dogs, which was a suggestion by the Miami police. And another is to add undercover narcotics officers to the crowd, which was suggested by Las Vegas police. Also, enact a zero tolerance policy. Do not allow water bottles into the concert at all. Make sure everyone is patted down correctly and make sure there's no re-entry. By having a no re-entry, that prevents people from going outside of the concert and obtaining drugs and then coming back inside the concert. Also, raise all, raise all the limits on the events, the age limits on the events, to 18 or above. 16 is way too young. Uh, and because policing didn't occur, where they allowed the 15-year-old to come in with fake ID, she died. So to prevent that, you need to always check the ID. And one way that Las Vegas police suggested is to use ID scanners, which will scan to see if the ID is real or fake. Also, and finally, if the show is known that it's going to be out of hand and way too disorderly, cancel the show completely. They actually did that in a Las Vegas uh, Daisy Carnival, or Electric Dance Musical Festival, after the death of the 15-year-old girl. This happened a month afterwards. They were playing this, they said, they canceled the show, they said, we don't want to do this, there's too much controversy going on. In closing, policing and security concerns need to be increased at these rave concerts. Too many deaths and injuries have occurred to ignore the problem. While we can increase policing concerns, policing and safety concerns, to ensure a high rate of safety, Things will never be perfect, but there are definite means that we could take and should be taking in order to prevent anything bad from happening.